on the loss of Julian Marchand then at Hooker, he was suspended for a dangerous tackle in the semi-final. It seemed a strange one in that it took quite a while for the suspension to come in. Not many people saw it at the time. You saw it. Yeah, myself and um, and Sam Warburton saw it in the BT studio. And, and, you know, it was one of those games where there was very little happening and it was probably a possible talking point. You know, they were only five points up with 22 minutes to go um even though it was you know it's, it felt like a more comfortable um lead than five points against bordeaux for me it was a, a very simple red card you know it was a chicken wing high shot there was no bent and not bent at the hips third defender in so uh, i don't know how the the referee and, and tmo managed to miss it but they did but we highlighted it after the game and um since he has been suspended, I've had some interesting messages in um, Google Translate French um, <laughs> into my direct um, direct messages on social media. Um, my mum hasn't come out great from it, um, but <laughs> it's been um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting to say the least. Um, and I've I've engaged with one or two. Oh really? Of them. Um, yeah, I think you know what? It's funny. Like most people, you know, as soon as you engage, they tend to soften. And I had a conversation. I just, this morning I had enough where I, I was like, are you guys still banging on about this? I said, it's not on me. My job is to call things as I see it. It's not to protect players. And if you're guilty of doing something, I've got to be able to tell the viewer at home what my opinion is. And that's the reality of it. I said, it's not my fault. I do feel for, for Marshawn. I really do, because he's missing out on a final. But I'm not going to feel guilty the fact that I had any um, say in in bringing it to the authorities in question. In question. Or, um, they you know, obviously the in France feel that you did. Going to see it. Yeah, well, maybe you know, they obviously do. And I, well, maybe I don't know how it's been reported over there. Um, that you know, obviously I haven't been privy to what they've been writing in the in, or, or front page of the keep in the news. Um, so yeah, but it's and um, Sam warburton has been in this in the same boat as um, as me. He's gotten some. You know, spicy messaging, but um, but it's you know to be honest with you, it's only to lose supporters, of course, um, because they're losing their captain. Um, but I don't think anyone could be in in, in disagreement um, that it you know wasn't a, a, a red card offence uh, on the on the on the protocol of what the high tackle framework you know is or whatever the I don't even know the new terminology of what they're calling it now. It was quite a clear cut red card, and unfortunately. Um, he got sanctioned accordingly. You don't need to defend yourself to me, Brian. Save it for Twitter and the trolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so, you know, I do, it is it is important though. It's as I was saying, sorry as well about how they soften their you know, it softens mm. their cough and how you know by the end of the conversation today it was it was along the lines of I really enjoyed this exchange. You know, we we might differ on this point, but um, you enjoy the game now at the weekend from calling me every name under the sun in the initial one. <laughs> I'd say we're de they were delighted to uh, get the chance to have a conversation and uh, occupy their afternoon. Uh, in terms of his loss in uh, for the game itself, so Toulouse have the best scrum in the competition. They've 100% success rate on their own scrum. He is such a big physical carrier and tackler. Uh, up against this La Rochelle pack, which is monstrous in itself, is Julien Marchand, his loss, potentially a game changer? It's a big loss. Don't get me wrong. He's he's you know they've they've pinned him as a as a captain at a very young age. He's been captain for a couple of seasons now. He's still only 24 or 25 years of age. So they saw something in him coming through the academy. Um, I, I think he's a local boy. So it's you know he's he's kind of this this new Toulouse personified. Um, so I think it's 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 not necessarily just the player it's the it's the person behind the player that is the loss and Movaka is a very nice player and comes on a lot of the time with 25 to go and never never disappoints never lets the team down so I think they've got a very good quality um player to replace him but sometimes it's about the personality particularly in finals a cool head and and someone that you know delivers calm messaging um, calm concise messaging as I said Raj would be doing this week I think you get that in the best of captains and he, he appears to not have put a foot wrong they, they speak um, glowingly about how good he's been uh, in his captaincy role so that's I suppose there's more of an onus now on the likes of um, Jerome Kaino, um to step up to the plate um, I don't know what the Arnold brothers are like but then Dupont and Entomac even though they're, they're young in age 
you know, that this is their moment to shine and, and take some of the pressure and, and take the focus away from being one leader down. But I, I don't, I think it would be a, a, a stretch to say this is, it's a game changing decision. If Cheslin Colby is gone, I think that's a potential game changer. I just think you can make up the difference in someone like Julian Marchand, but um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens in that front row and, and, and you know, what happens when they lock down in that first scrum.